Let me show how to perform Node.js CPU profiling within Visual Studio Code itself. Okay, so a long time ago, I made some Node.js debugging videos in which I showed some basic tips on debugging using Node.js. But somehow, I missed this entire category of debugging within Visual Studio Code itself. I was debugging something the other day, and a friend observed that I was viewing the profiler data within Visual Studio Code itself. So I told my friend, go and watch my previous video. However, I actually forgot to make a video that you can use Visual Studio Code itself to show the profiler data. So let's do that today. Okay, let's get started. Let me switch to my test application that I wrote just for this situation. My test application, which is being shown on screen, is basically a Node.js web service, which only has one HTTP GET method, in which the method will just waste a lot of CPU. We will use this method to profile so that we have a function that at least wastes a certain amount of CPU so that we can see it in the profiler data. There are two ways to profile this method. The first way is to attach a debugger and use the debugger to generate the profiler data. And the second way is to actually add code to enable the profiler. Let me show both ways on how to get the profiler to work. First, using the debugger. Launching the debugger is pretty straightforward. If I look at the package JSON, I see that the start is just node inspect index. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I run yarn start over here, it will just run the application and it will put the inspect flag. So let's go ahead and attach the debugger to the application. If you're confused on how I managed to get to this point of attaching the debugger to a running application, watch my videos in this playlist. I give a breakdown of how to use the debugger effectively with Node.js applications. Now that the application is running, if we go down to the call stack over here, we get an additional button in, in the front here, which is the take performance profile, which is this circular button over here. The actual toolbar up here does not have that button. I'm not sure why, but if we click on the circular button over here, we get to take a performance profile. We get this drop down where we have a CPU profile, a heap profile, or a heap snapshot. For this video, we will choose CPU profile. The heap profile and the heap snapshot are to analyze memory. Let's go with CPU for the first run. I will make a video in the future about the heap profile because that is a bit more involved video. So let's go with CPU profile for the first attempt. Now within the CPU profile, you have manual, duration, and peak breakpoint. I'm not really sure what pick breakpoint does, so I'm going to avoid that. Manual just means, like we choose manual, manual just means that the profiler is active until I click the stop button over here. As long as I don't click this button, the actual profiler will just keep running. So let's use manual for the first attempt. Duration just means the same thing as manual, but it will just end at a certain time. I, I don't think that's really that useful. I think just pressing the button uh, is more than enough. Now that the profiler is running, Let's just trigger the actual network call. So I'm going to open another PowerShell window and I'm just going to do a curl to the function and let the curl run. There we are, 200 OK. And this would have actually triggered the function to do something and I will get a profiler statement when I press the stop button over here. So let's go ahead and stop the profile. Now what happens when I stop the profile is that, let me just close the screen, is that a file is actually written into my project called VS Code Profile and it gives a, a date here, CPU Profile. This file requires a plugin to load. So if I go to my plugins, there is a plugin called Flame Chart Visualizer for JS Profiles. This plugin will load by itself if you have it. But if you don't have it, you'll get a prompt to install it. Uh, just install it. If you have this plugin and you select this file, you will get this page over here in which it will decode the contents of the file and display out the actual profiler data and sort it for you. So from the profiler data, I can see that the heaviest function is the function perform heavy task over here. Um, you know what, that, that is the worst function because it is the only function and all it's doing is just bleeding through CPU by just wasting CPU, calculating a, a really heavy number over here. But if I select it over here, 
um, I get another feature, which is a flame graph. So the flame graph button is actually on the right hand side over here. Let me just arrange the windows a bit so you can see the button. It's this button over here. If I click on this button, the flame graph is going to open. Let me just close the package JSON and show you the flame graph. The flame graph is showing the idle because the program was idling for quite a while. But if I zoom in on the one function call that I have over here and I zoom in, I can see that this function call is a network call and it goes down all the way to the bottom. Let me just arrange the screen a bit. And there we are, it goes down all the way to the bottom and it goes perform heavy task, which is the actual slow function. And then it sends the output back to the curl. So this is pretty cool. You can get a lot of information about which functions are slow just by using this flame graph. But you can also do this programmatically. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me just detach the debugger and I can add some code. Let me just close the profile over here. I can add some code to this function to profile it. So to profile this code, what I do is I go to the function that I want to profile. In this case, I want to profile uh, perform heavy tasks. So what I do is I just go and add console profile. And after that, I add console profile end like that. So let's restart the application. So if I kill the application and start it again, the profiler will be enabled. I still need to attach my debugger to collect the profile data. So let me go ahead and do that. So the application is running and the profiler is ready. Let me just invoke the function using curl. So what happened now is that the profiler data is actually ready. So if I go back to my view over here of my Explorer view, I see that I have another CPU profile. Let's go ahead and run curl one more time and we will get another CPU profile. Run curl another time and we'll get another CPU profile. Each of the CPU profiles are exactly the same as manually clicking. But the difference now is that because it is programmatic, it is only profiling within this segment over here. So if I look at the CPU profile, it's actually a bit shorter. I can choose the other one. It's also a bit shorter. I can choose the other one. It's also a bit shorter. So if I take this heavy profile over here and I look at the flame graph, I'm going to get a flame graph that is a bit easier to use because it does not have the send at the back here. That's because we ended the profiler before we sent out the response. So basically, this is the gist of how you can get a programmatic CPU profile or even a manual CPU profile from within Visual Studio itself. I actually use this technique fairly often. I didn't think about it the last time when I was debugging that you could actually just write it to the disk. I find this technique very, very useful, especially when you have applications where you just needed the profile of one function or just one segment of function. You can quickly just do profile console, profile end, and you can get the actual profile just for one segment. Anyway, let me know in the comments below if you have used this technique before. I made this video because someone was looking over my shoulder and noticed that I was making these profiles appear and he asked me how did I do it? And then I remembered, oh, it's actually pretty simple. You just have to click a few buttons or put in this statement and you can actually get the profile. So I decided to make this very quick video to show how to use this technique. This video is a bit different because it is Node.js debugging, but I'll continue to make wind debug videos. I have one more memory dump, which I want to make a video on. So don't worry, we'll get back to wind debug, but this time it's Node.js just to complete the series of debugging for Node.js. Gentle reminder to subscribe. Hit that bell icon and give a like if you like the content. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.